To demonstrate the extrude command, we will model a six-sided dice. Each side of the dice has a different number of dimples in it at different locations, so it will allow us to learn about a variety of sketch tools in the process. So let's get started. First, we'll create a simple cube. Remember, we need to create a sketch on a plane and then extrude or add volume to the sketch to create a 3D object. Okay, so open up a new Part Studio. Click on the Sketch button. The Sketch 1 dialog window appears. A message also appears to select a sketch plane, and an input box is highlighted blue because it's active and it's asking for an input. For this, we'll sketch on the top plane. There are two ways to go about selecting the top plane. Either select it from the feature tree by clicking on top, or in the workspace, hover over it and click on it after it highlights. After your selection, notice that the blue input box now turns white and displays top plane. Also notice that in the workspace, a new plane labeled sketch one appears to overlap the top plane. This is where our sketch will go. If you accidentally selected the wrong plane, you can click this small X to cancel your selection and then make the right selection. Now we have our plane selected that we will sketch on, but note we have to stay in the sketch. Make sure not to close the sketch window. Here's a side note. If you accidentally click the green check accept or red X cancel button, you will exit the sketch or sketch mode. To go back into editing the sketch, if you pressed the green check accept button, find sketch one in the feature tree, right click it, and select edit. On the other hand, if you accidentally pressed the red X cancel button, it will cancel the sketch and you will have to recreate it. Okay, now, as in all my tutorial videos, I think that the workspace is too cluttered like this. We have all these planes intersecting each other, but we don't need to be looking at this clutter. So let's hide everything unnecessary. Come over here to the feature tree and notice the top, front, and right planes. As I hover over them, an eye icon appears to the right of each name. Clicking on each of the eye icons will hide each of the planes. Okay we have one more housekeeping task. Notice that we're looking at our sketch one plane at an angle. When creating sketches, I like to look straight on at the sketch from above. The term in the CAD world for this point of view is called normal two. Let's set that up now. Right click on the workspace and select view normal two sketch plane. Alternatively, since we're sketching on the top plane, we can use the view cube and select the top side of it to view the workspace squarely from the top. Once we're in the normal to view, we can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out to get a view that we're comfortable working in. Okay, let's sketch our square. Move your mouse to the rectangle icon and notice that there's a drop down list here. You can sketch two types of rectangles. The names should be self-explanatory, but I'll quickly demonstrate. Corner rectangles create a rectangle from the corner, like this, and center rectangles are created from the center of the rectangle, like this. For our purposes, click and choose center rectangle. Now we could place this rectangle anywhere on the sketch plane, but it is good practice to sketch things from the workspace origin which is the center of the workspace. So hover over the origin, which is this small dot surrounded by a circle. There are two ways you can draw the rectangle. First, either click and hold your mouse button as you drag it outwards, then release to stop the drawing. Alternatively, click once to start drawing and then click a second time to finish drawing. The initial size is not important since we're going to set its size to a specific value. The term in the CAD world used for setting features to a specific size is dimensioning. So 
we're going to assign dimensions or we're going to dimension the length and width of our rectangle. Actually, we're making a square so both sides will be equal. So let's do that next. To set dimensions, find and select the dimension tool in the sketch bar. Once activated, notice that your cursor pointer changes to a cross and the dimension button is highlighted. Now, there are two ways to set dimensions of lines. We'll do both. First, with the dimension tool activated, we can just click on the line we want to dimension. An input box with a highlighted value appears. Click again to place the dimension. Its location is not important, you can put it anywhere. This is where we set our dimension. Recall that in my workspace, the default unit is inches. So I'm going to type 0.5 and press enter. The length of that segment is now 0.5 inches or half an inch. The two adjacent segments have turned black because their separation is now defined. However, we can still change the position of this segment as well as the four corners. That's why those are still blue. Now let's set the length of the box's other side. Make sure the dimension tool is still activated. Now, like we did using the first method, we could just select this top side to call up the dimension. Alternatively, if you click on the two vertical segments, you're telling Onshape that you want to set the separation between the two vertical lines, which also achieves what we want. Okay, click again to place the dimension. Since we want to create a square, make this side 0.5 inches as well, and press Enter. Note that all blue sketch elements have turned black. This means that everything in the sketch is now defined. More on this later. Okay, we're done with our sketch. Click the green check button on the sketch window to accept. You can also rotate the workspace. On my setup, I press and hold the right mouse button to do this. You'll see that we now have a flat sketch of a square. Okay, right click on the workspace and select isometric. Then zoom out with your mouse wheel. Now we can create our cube. Remember, we want to extrude our sketch. Click on the Extrude Feature button. The Extrude window appears. At the top here, we have the window title, which is Extrude 1, or the first extrude. Next, we have Solid, already selected. We'll be extruding a solid, not a surface, so this is okay. We also have New selected, since we'll be extruding a new part. Next, we have this input box, and it's highlighted blue because it wants an input. It says faces and sketch regions to extrude. So in your workspace, highlight the square we just sketched on and click on it. Two things will happen. First, we get a preview of what our extruded volume will look like, and the blue input box is now populated with face of sketch one. Moving on. Under the input box, we have this drop-down list which specifies the end type. We will leave blind selected, but if you click on it, you will see all the different options we can choose from. Later in the course, we'll be using others for sure. Blind just means that we can specify an exact distance to extrude to. Next to the drop-down list, there's this button with the two arrows on it. It just reverses the direction of the extrusion. If you click on it, you can see the preview change direction in the workspace. Okay, click on it again to make it face upward. Next, we have depth. One inch is default in my window. If I click to highlight the field, I can enter a new value. Alternatively, with my mouse cursor over the highlighted value, I can scroll my wheel to incrementally increase or decrease the value. And alternatively, also notice the arrow that appears in the previewed extrusion in the workspace. This arrow can be clicked and dragged to change the distance. Okay, so remember that we're modeling a dice or cube, so all sides need to be equal. 
we've already set the sides of the square to be 0 0.5 inches or half an inch, so we need to make the extrusion distance half an inch as well. So type in 0 0.5 inches and then either press tab, enter, or click on the workspace. And the preview will update. Okay, so that's all we need. Click the green check button to accept. Sweet, so we have our cube. Feel free to zoom in and out and rotate your view to get a good look. Once you're done, right click the workspace and select isometric. Next up, we'll be getting to work on the six sides. This will be a great opportunity to learn about the various sketch tools while keeping each sketch very simple.